right to fight for what we want To live the way we please As long as we have done our best Then no one can do more Hello there, welcome to the incredibly professional <laughs> Flashing Blade podcast, live. Um, not that you'd ever notice. Uh, I'm Sharon, hello. And, oh, we wave first. Brian, introduce yourself, Brian. Hi, I'm Brian, the plucky companion. Plucky girl assistant, yes. And that, that's good, well done. Jolly good. And my other plucky girl assistant is Eddie. Yeah, Eddie, the oldest uh, podcast trainee in town. Hmm, that's an interesting one. Hmm, are you though? Are you? Maybe. Uh, it won't be, Adam. It won't be. Um, anyway, yes, right, so, stuff. How are you all doing? Everyone all right? You two okay? Keeping safe and confined. Brian? Pretty much okay. Are you being... I chicken wings. Life is good. Uh, how's the trail mix holding out? Uh, pretty good. I got this bag and two more down in the cupboard. I'm okay for now. We'll let oh, you know when the trail makes oh, emergencies. I, 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 sorry, go ahead, sorry. No big global trail mix shortage soon. That's holding. It's, oh, it's, it's the chocolate shortage I'm worried about. Um. <clears throat> well, I have both in here. Covered <laughs> reasons, too. Anyway, uh, yep, so we're about to start, um, <sighs> month. 762 of lockdown? Uh, yes. Bored. So bored. <laughs> Dear God. All I ever do, right, in my in my daily life is I will get up, blah, 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 hobble over to the shops, sit down, have a cup of coffee and a rest, go to the shops, get the bits and pieces I need, toddle back home. That's all I ever did. Couldn't do anything else. I am missing just that. It's weird. You know, it's not like I actually do much, but just that tiny little bit. It's, oh, horrible. Losing track of days and years. The dog doesn't know what the hell to think. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit odd, to be fair. Glasgow's a bit bizarre as well. You get people actually doing exercise now because it's only the hour they do to get out of the house. <laughs> I've never seen so many joggers, walkers. Well, at least they people that obviously have not done it in their life. At least they can go out of the house. I'm not bloody allowed to. Oh, I know. I know. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. Well, now it's warming up. I might go and sit in the garden. That'll be something to do. The Karens, you know, walking around thinking that they own the world. Mmm. Yeah. It was. Did you see the ultimate ca Facebook, Karen? Um, no offence, obviously, to Mrs. Dunn. But um, I feel a bit sorry for her, actually. Sort of the, the, the whiny, mad Facebook person is called Karen. Um, yeah. poor, poor, poor old fake Keith. Uh, but the um, it was this woman. She'd found some guys who were laying um, some cables, some, putting some cabling in the street. And it was for 5G or something. So first of all, she had a go at them for being outside and working. Was there thing um yes adam uh was their thing you know necessary and when they said 5g oh God almighty, 5g kills us it's responsible for coronavirus and this that and the other it it if you can see the mash report this week's the mash report it's on the bbc iplayer um you'll sort of get the idea quite frankly some of these bloody conspiracy theories are mad they're just I've said it before, I'll say it again. We have had the Bronze Age, the Iron Age. We've had the Plastic Age and the Silicon Age. Now we're in the Stupid Age. I'm yeah. sorry, but we are. Oh. Idiocracy. <laughs> there should be a game like Oh, there probably is a game like that. Just remember, electrolytes, it's what plants need. <laughs> President Camacho, what's he's in? We'll be fine. Where mm -hmm. is President Camacho? I don't know. Oh, just, just... Only he's orange and not black. There's, um... <laughs> oh, there's a... Is actually smarter. Uh... Oh, what is it called? It's a game where you have to build and control a virus, and the idea is to wipe out the world with your virus. Um, and one of the scenarios they have is the virus is actually fake news. Hello, Sean. Play a game? 
it could, yeah, again? it might well be. Jingles did a video on it at the beginning of the week. And yeah, I, it, I, I, got, I answered that, Siobhan. That was me. I answered that all by myself. Not, Sean had nothing to do with it. Have a lolly. <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, there's this virus of fake news, and some of the things, the options you could have in this, not too far away from reality, scarily enough. Anyway, aren't we supposed to be doing a thing today? Are we a supposed things. to do? Oh yeah, we're supposed to be doing things. Now we've done the, haha, let's be talkative and whatever. So, with one of these amazingly smooth scene transitions, and now from the world's BBC television's Doctor Who, it's Doctor Who. love that piece of music sorry um yes so anyway cello and the who theme it, they, and choir mix beautifully uh so because these two filthy disgusting ignorant little peasants hadn't seen it <clears throat> We've watched an unearthly child. <laughs> you certainly have. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you still haven't seen the entirety of the beginning of Doctor Who. There's still another episode you need to see, but we will, we'll, we'll move on to that. Uh, that's just it. Uh, it's the transmitted version, Adam. We watched uh, the transmitted version of an unearthly child. So, the first Doctor Who, or back then... Doctor Who. Um, yeah, he's living in a little junkyard because, you know, he does that. That's what he does. It means he can just go out and get a nice hat whenever he needs one. Um, we don't know anything about the Hand of Omega at the moment either. And then two dozy school teachers decide, oh, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to follow the girl home. And it's his granddaughter and they end up in the TARDIS and all hell breaks loose, quite frankly. Now, before you start your review, please, gentlemen, um, I've done this several, several, several times. Don't mention Britbox to me, Brian. I'll moan about that afterwards. Um, I like it. Uh, um, I I've reviewed this too many times to mention. I adore it. All of it. All four episodes. I adore them. However, what I'd like you two to do is to look at the context surrounding the broadcast of this first episode. Okay. You've got the Kennedy assassination. We don't know anything anything at all about Doctor Who. It's never existed. All this is brand new. It is a very dark and miserable Saturday evening in November 1963. Your television isn't a big thing. It's a tiny little screen in the corner of the room. It's probably not even... Most rooms nowadays are set up to face the television. Not in those days. It was a little thing in, in the corner of the room that you'd go and see occasionally. It's a bit like the radio in that respect. So, guys, bearing that context in mind... Do a review, now! Uh, I liked episode one. Episode one, setting up the whole premise. Uh, I liked the whole thing with Susan. Hang on, hang on. Spoilers. Oh, spoilers, right. Some yeah, people yeah. haven't <laughs> seen it. Something that's been on for 50 years. No, there can't be anybody out there that hasn't seen the first episode of Doctor Who. Come on. Well, not now. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the final two people on the planet have now seen it. And they're both in the podcast with you on Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, obviously that first episode is the setup. Uh, and then you've got a little three-part adventure after that. So do you want to deal with the whole thing as a whole? Or would you like to look at the first episode and then look at the three-parter? Yeah, I think Let's I... Let's do the first episode first. Okay, then. Like the first episode. Like That's Susan... Good. Yeah, I like the, the, the Susan's little drops in terms of decimalisation. Oh, you just don't know about that yet? Great. And the TARDIS was absolutely beautiful. Loved it. First TARDIS. It, my first... It's, it's, I, 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 for some reason, I, it's, I always think of uh, Hartnell's TARDIS to be the one that was used in the movie, which was, yeah, it's perfect. Beautiful. Loved it. Loved, loved Susan. Loved the setup. 
bit creepy why teachers are following a kid home who's actually a very good student and that just but I suppose it's all this time. I suppose teachers Must stop their kids at school. Uh, yeah, like the first episode over you, Brian. <laughs> he said backing out of it very quickly. <laughs> that the teachers are getting annoyed at this smart ass kid it's fantastic and very realistic and then they're like but she doesn't know how to do simple division she but you can't do it like that Mr. Chesterton stuff. you can't do it without D&D exactly all you have to do is find C but uh... D and E <laughs> but, but, but. It is wonderful. They build the mystery up really nicely. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it works very well with that old 1960s setting and, the, you know, the London fog and everything else like that. It, it, it just feels right. It feels like this they are showing us of the time. This is what it was like. Um, yes, because these days teachers stalking a, one of their students' home after school would be illegal. Yeah, that's a totally different uh, connotation, a different story these days. But yeah, that probably, yeah. So, and then you got that first TARDIS dematerialization. What did you think of Billy, by the way, in this, the first Doctor? What did you make of him? I struggled with him. Overbearing. Uh, yes, a bit uncaring, a bit. Uncaring, uh, aloof, and empathetic. Keep going. Condescending twit. Yeah. Oh dear, dear, dear. Um. <laughs> tell you what we're going to yeah, do. I love the character. He was fantastic. <laughs> I tell you what we're going to do then. We're going to continue with this. We're going to look at. Uh, <laughs> the mutants, the Daleks, the dead planet, whatever the fuck you want to call it this week. Um, the first Dalek story, which comes next. And then we're going to do Edge of Destruction. All right. Um, it's seven episodes, Brian. Word of warning, this first Dalek story. Okay. Okay. Um, and they do drag a little in places. But again, I want... You need to see these three stories really together up to a point. <coughs> because it, these three make... It's, it's not just an unearthly child that is the beginning of Doctor Who. It's these three stories that are the beginning of Doctor Who. They're, after the Edge of Destruction, Doctor Who as we knew it in the 60s, so to speak, began. Um, but, yeah, so we'll do the Daleks and we'll do um, Edge of Destruction. However, we need to deal with the tribe of gum. Now, I've already said I love those three episodes. Um, as an old school fan, 30 years this year I've been in official fandom. But I've loved Doctor Who since 72, I have, because I'm old. Um, yeah, the... Uh, I love them. I, I love it. Cal is a dick, quite frankly. Um, the old woman got what was coming to her. Oh, poor yeah. old mother! She's no. one of the great doomsayers of our generation! Fire will kill us all. You shall not make fire. She is the head of the inbred family from the backwoods. I think the tribe of gun might possibly be that family. Full stop. Exactly. <laughs> You've got a weak leader um, in Cal. Uh, uh, sorry, in, in Zar. Zar. In Zar. To be, God, these names. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, and it is. It's... This the, the the caveman story is the backdrop to learn about our main characters, quite frankly. We learn how resourceful and how moral Chesterton is. Um, we see Barbara slowly coming to terms with things and putting her own spin in things and, quite frankly, taking a no-nonsense attitude. Out over dead pigs. <coughs> yeah, well, quite, wouldn't you? And then the smell of pork would come to you and you <laughs> no, I'm having some of that. Uh, oh, I haven't had roast pork in years. Um, and... Obviously, Susan, there's a little bit for Susan to do, and she does get developed a little bit further on in the series, but not too much, which I believe is why Carol Ann Ford left originally. Uh, and then, of course, there's the Doctor being a complete git and apparently offering a rock 
to this dazed and confused and wounded caveman so that he can draw them a map. What do you make of that scene? Good. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I've been, I'm choosing words very carefully because if, if this is your favorite, one of your favorite adventures, this could be my last episode. No, 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 no. There's no judgment here except mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, the doctor, it appears, was going to basically clonk the caveman on the head. Poor old Tsar. What do we make of that compared to the doctor of nowadays? I'm surprised he could lift the, the rock in the first place. <laughs> Poor old Billy. He was only 56 when he started, same age as Capaldi. That's, 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 that's what I think. He's been the camera ads 10 years. Too. But, I mean, if you look at the photos of Bill out of um, costume, <coughs> he looks his age, 50, some odd, 56. You know, it's makeup and performance that brings the Doctor to life. It's, you know, he, he, Bill Hartnell was not that old man. He was a grumpy old bastard, but... Chesterton's a hero. Oh, yes. I believe Sue Perriman said that he, uh, the story should have been called... Sorry, the whole series should have just been called Ian. <laughs> yeah. Ian, yeah. Ian who? Uh, there's really more of a hindrance, for want of a better word, NPC. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Both the, the early stories. That is interesting. Um, <laughs> no. Being actually, again, this is the this is early who, where the Doctor isn't really that proactive. Um, as right, uh, you, exactly. you're. That's why I want to go through. That's why I want to take us up to the end of Edge of Destruction. Um, no. Is this what they survive in spite of the Doctor? Not because. Oh, very much so. Especially in the next story. Um, because he's a naughty little boy in the next story. That's all I'm going to say. Um, as an opening to what is essentially a kid's drama series. Uh, back in the 60s, like I say, early 60s. What do we make of it? Do we feel it held its ground in the, its own context? For a kid's opening, spot on. It, it, they, they would, one or two ways you go. You either go into the future or you go back to caveman times. And or you can go sideways. That was the third route. Forwards yeah. and backwards and sideways in time. Yeah. Uh, well, the... So, uh, yeah, great, they went back to caveman time, but I really struggled with give me fire, don't give me fire for three episodes. It's at one point, it was like, or can I I'm say, gonna rub the the fuck's sake, give them the fire. Was... Sorry, I, I'm just remembering how, how, how well the meat goes with the fire. How well they blend together. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, um... So, so, so I'm going to go back to, to my, my bad pun, and, I, and it was you mentioned that the, the girl that was scared of the wild boar, uh, and how she shouldn't have been, she should have seen pork before. Well, there was so much ham in those three episodes, she should not have been a stranger to bacon. Boys. There was so much ham there, it should have, you know, not been labelled as edible or something. I would also like to point out some of the little behind the scenes things which may have influenced it. Um, first of all meat under hot studio lights that's never good. All the furs that the um, cave guys were in infested with fleas. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In fact I think they lost at least one member of the cast who refused to do it. Um, that's why they killed the old woman off. No, old mo old mother is one of Doctor Who's great heroes. We don't diss old mother. You listen to her advice. Uh, it's a great start to the series, but it's it's very low key. But it is so fitting with where it exists, just in our cultural history, that it should be like that. <coughs> you know, a gentle start, leveling the mystery out to us. Fifty years later, we've got explosions everywhere. But back I mean, then, 
you can't ignore its importance. Without it, we wouldn't have what we have today. It's, it's, it's a great cultural milestone. I mean, we don't know, we didn't know it at the time, and people will still say, are you sure? But people who know a little bit more about cultural history will say, yes, yes, it is. Um, we have to remember, they're still developing everything. Yeah, it's, it's still Fire going. It's still developing from when they're doing this story. 56 years on. I mean, it's, we don't have regeneration. We don't have Time Lords. We know they're all fogles, but we don't know if they're actual aliens. I mean, it's... it's... Yeah, they... they it's certainly, during Hartnell's time, whilst it was... It seemed he was a human being. But more than that, if that made sense. And then slowly we got the mythology unraveled to us a little bit. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, Okay, I, I, we, 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 th I'm sorry, I'm, I'm official flashing blade thumbs up to an unearthly child yet again. These two's opinions may differ, but as I've said before, they don't matter. No. Listen, to aunt, listen to auntie, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> ah, democracy, what's that? Um, no, um, overall though, did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Funny. I, 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 it was years too late for me. I, sh I, I apologise to, to fa who found them. I've watched it for years and never actually watched an Earthly Child all the way through. Uh, and I'm glad I did. Well, exactly. It's 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 a thing, isn't it? It's. I mean, I first saw it. Oh, when did I first see it, see it? Oh, good God! Five Faces of Doctor Who. Uh, back in. 81. Yeah, Five Faces of Doctor Who. That's when I first saw it. It's, um... Sorry, I'm just looking for something. Carry on talking about um, an unearthly child, guys. I just need to find no. something. They really need to bring Susan back. Yes. I'm wondering if they will, you know. It's something I singing in my head. The, the current act, the actress as she is currently. Mm. Or have a regeneration of her come back they've done it with big finish big finish have brought her back a few times yeah and there's a new set coming out from big finish uh susan's war and it's basically susan in the time war i would love to see that well yeah. hear it hear I would it love to see susan and jody working together i don't know part of me thinks we are gonna get a guest shot from susan i can see chibnall doing it i don't know why it's just in my head somewhere that, yeah, they're going to bring well, Caroline Ford back. Jack back. So, I mean, come on, pander more to the fan base. We want Susan back. I don't know. I just think it... With the Doctor nowadays having a lot more... Having more roots than they used to. Um, it's... Uh, I don't know, I, I can see them bringing Susan in just to give that little extra, um, whatchamacallit. Excuse me a second, I just need well, to... Well, Susan is his family, or her family, their family. That's very true. Just very quickly, so we all know what we're talking about here. Um, this is Old Mother. <coughs> um, like I say, one of Doctor Who's unsung heroes... I'm I'm sorry, but she I mean she let them out of the cave because they shall not make fire. Hey, do you yeah. want to see a really cool picture of Ian Chesterton? The coolest picture well it's not Chesterton, but it's certainly William Russell. Do you want to see one of the coolest pictures that ever existed? Go for it. Oh, righty ho, we'll do it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, William Russell, as Sir Lancelot, on horseback, smoking a pipe. Tell me that's not cool. That ticks a lot of boxes. That ticks a lot of boxes. Off, lines on, tape. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's quite remarkable, really, isn't it? I still haven't actually found the thing I was looking for, which is probably a song. Probably by you 2 Pay your tax, Bono! <clears throat> Sorry. It's sort of an instant reaction whenever I hear you 2 being mentioned. I have to yell out. I can't find this fucker. That's really bugging me. I was basically going to deem you unworthy of the diamond logo, but I've already done that to the pair of you, so... Anyway, that was an unearthly child. 
But we also did something else, Doctor Who, didn't we? We certainly did. We did do listening. Did. The uh, lives of Captain Jack. Uh, one of the latest releases from Big Village. It's a three-story box set. Um, we're not going to give spoilers away because it is a new release. However, we can say as it's on the cover, uh, there's a story with Jack and uh, Jackie, Jackie Tyler, Rose's mum. There's also a story, a story at long last, with River Song. Um, and then you've got a little story in the middle. So what we're going to do is... Um, Let's look at the Jackie Tyler one, first of all. Uh, Jack has taken Jackie on a holiday. Except it's gone a bit wrong. I, I, I don't know. Um, Why do people ever go anywhere with, with these people? I mean, everything goes wrong. This is like going on a holiday and your flight's delayed, you're cramped. You but it's Jackie them. Tyler in space. Oh, it's perfect. She's fantastic. And the speech she gives is amazing. Oh yeah, um, about her and Rose and everything. I love the fact she can just twist on a dial from going to being incredibly selfish and self-centered, and she can twist and suddenly it's somebody else, and then it'll, you know this isn't fair. Well, it's not about you, Jackie. She, she'll you know? start, you know, complaining about these people left and right. And, uh, Oh, they shouldn't be doing. Oh. But it's it's Jackie in space, but it's grounded in reality because oh, yeah, it's, it's all about much. a replacement bus service, or the equivalent of a replacement bus service. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. We're probably the British, uh, British train knows exactly what that feels like. With the most sarcastic robot you'll ever meet. Oh, he was marvelous. Oh, he, he's the perfect minimum wage. Yeah, uh, th this is essentially the guy in charge of the replacement space shuttle <laughs> service. 40 years, zero Fs left to give. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's uh, it it's a wonderful little story. It's a light introduction to the set, um, and it'll get you just straight in there. Obviously, John Barrowman, he, he knows Jack backwards. Um, so, And it is interesting to hear... Jack on audio as, a part, part, as opposed to Jack on TV. Jack on TV, there's an awful lot of physicality to it as well. And somehow he's got to bring that forward in his performance on audio without... I don't mean to say going over the top, because that's wrong. <coughs> that's not what I mean. But being ride. too forceful with it. Do you know what I mean? It's, you um, can kind of hear his little, you know... You yeah, know. you can hear the wink in his voice, but he has dialed it down a little bit because it's audio and it works as a result. Jack ends up being... I actually think he, he's more well-rounded on audio than he is in, on the telly. It's, it's, That's it's, what I reckon. I'm sympathetic. He is there, there's a lot of comic fodder as well, and he's, he's just the flapping and stuff, but he's, a, he's just a more... It makes him more human, hmm. if that's... Yeah, because there's there's, 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 there's there's more to his character, and, they, and it's a big finish to everybody that they, they, they bring that out, they tease that out. Yeah, yeah. And Barman, you've got to say, rises to the challenge as well. I think he's really good. Like oh, oh, definitely. I love the fact he forgets the settings of his pen knife. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to the second story. Tell us the plot of the second story, boys and girls. Give us, give us, a, give us a quick pre uh, Disposed Queen. Crash lands on Jack's planet. Right. Turns out she's immortal. But her she's handmaiden is not. <gasps> da, da, da. Is Jack immortal at this stage, or are we heading back in time a little bit down his timeline? Cool. I think he is immortal, but he does he's, he's eventually. Uh, he's, he's got his. This is, this is uh, Silver Fox Sparman, Jack. So they do talk about his grey hair. I don't know if that's not a spoiler. But uh, they're also trapped on the planet they can't escape, which I'll not go into. Uh, and this takes this the story takes place over God, you we lose count about how many years. But, uh, because the handmaiden. Yeah, yeah. 
Was it enjoyable? Um, did you did you enjoy it? And did it tug at the heartstrings? Did it make you raise your fist to the skies and yell, Barrowman? No, no, it was more of a Torchwood episode. Okay, well, uh, Adam's just uh, written a nice question in chat. Is this Doctor Who Jack or Torchwood Jack? Story it's 2 is good. definitely more Torchwood Jack. Torchwood Jack. Yeah. Because there is a difference, to be fair. He's a darker, more serious, more overly wise, more browbeaten Jack in this episode. Brian, Brian Love, he's watching the show. He's heard the answer. You didn't have to type it up, dear. I, I can type it. I, I don't mind typing. You're bored, aren't you? I can tell. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> my hand something to do. <laughs> Stop that it's, one, soon, man. Three <laughs> stories, but that's the, the bar with the other two for me was so much. I, I really enjoyed this story. Uh, it does tug at the heartstrings. You, we, we, you basically, you, the, 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 the handmaidens. Like By the end, you're like, uh, maybe, maybe Jack was right at the beginning. Yep. You think? Would you say Brian the Handmaiden's probably the proxy for the listener? Because like, oh, so definitely, definitely, the Handmaiden is clearly devoted, devout, and possibly in love with the Queen. Fair enough. Okay, let's go on yeah, to the third story. Very tragic. Oh, it's so sad. Um, yes, R and J, River and Jack. We start off at the face of Bo's funeral. Um, and River turns up uh, looking for someone uh, and she buggers off quickly and Jack turns up having just missed her so it's fairly obvious that these two seem to know each other the story jumps around in their timelines I should imagine what most people thought they'd get when River first met Jack would be some rollicking adventure with the two of them trading quips and they didn't do this, Big Finish. Clever little buggers. Um, essentially, what we have is the Doctor and River's relationship repeated, but repeated yeah. really well. Um, it's understandable. Remember, both of them <laughs> very possibly got the same vortex manipulator, um, and they're both just bobbing through time and bumping into each other out of synchronicity, um, out of continuity. It, it, their timelines just don't sync. And so you've got this... You've got, this story is made up of a load of little scenes of them meeting at different points in their timelines. Sometimes River doesn't know Jack, vice versa, and they're slowly getting there. The thing is, Jack really likes River. More so, I should think, than... Normally Jack's a flirt, yeah? He cared for Yanto, we know that. Um... He cared for... Oh, I can't remember his name, and I've just watched um, Miracle Day as well. Oh, oh the yeah, laddie... The, yeah, the laddie... Um, yeah, the guy, the guy that got old and... Mm. Shit. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so we, we know there's more depth to him than Flirty Jack. And this comes out with his relationship with River. The trouble is, he's up against a mystery man he doesn't know. Um, someone that River is completely besotted with, and annoyed with, but besotted with. Um, Jack doesn't stand a chance, even though he does try. There's a, Some of the scenes are fitted in towards gaps in Doctor Who continuity. A uh, new series, obviously. Um, where they just turn up, and other stuff's been happening, and... I'm not going to tell you who Jack's rival is, but Jack doesn't find out until the end. Um, if you want to listen to it in a linear fashion. Um, this is beautiful. This, this is really a beautiful... It's, it, it is. It, it, it's this beautiful encapsulation of, of, of two time travellers trying to have a... Well, one trying to have a romance and the other one just wanting a friend. 
Um, this is as good as anything Stephen Moffat could have written, uh, just in terms of playing with the whole concept of time mm. and uh, the non-linear time. It's, yeah. uh, it's really, really well done. I, I mean, I've got to say this. Since the show, since we um, went live on Twitch to do this, this show, and we've gone back into reviewing the big finishes, there hasn't been a duff one yet, I can remember. No. Oh, no. It's, um... It's... They've, they've, these guys, I mean, how long has Big Finish been going for now? 20 years? More than 20 years? 25 years? 26 years? I don't know. I and mean, then you start looking at Benny. And then, of course, you've got all the experience they had during the audio visuals, the fan audios. Um, these guys are really, they, they, they know what they're doing. They know uh, Doctor Who inside and out. Well, no, not just, no, not just Doctor Who, but storytelling in general. I mean, look at all the other rangers they have. It, it's not just Doctor Who. They can do it with anything because they know what they're doing when it comes to crafting decent stories. They know Prisoner as well. I uh, know well, that's a bad link, but uh, the, 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 the Prisoner can semi-reboot. Uh, me and my son listened to it. And, and th again, that's Radio 4 show. Put them on now and again. Um, uh, Radio 4 Extra. And uh, again, uh, they, know, they, they know their stuff. They've, they know their research. But it's it's... They, they love the source materials. That's that's really what comes across. They, right. they, they love what they're doing. No, very, very much so. I mean, The Prisoner was a work of love from Nick Briggs. He, he said that. You know, this was a pet project. It was one he really wanted to do. Um, so, talking of The Prisoner... Bad surgery. Eddie is now going to basically be uh, very happy... Because not only have we looked at Arrival, um, we're going to do the whole Prisoner series, and then we're going to do a live rewatch re of, well, a live watch in Brian's case, of the final episode, Fallout. Um, that'll be in 16 weeks' time. Number six, we're ready. Oh, that's cool, Eddie. You look like you work at McDonald's. Um, Special reason. Well, if we had a McDonald's, now come on, too soon, Siobhan. Some of us don't favour McDonald's. Maybe. Some of us don't use McDonald's. Uh, I know what McDonald's is made out of. Some of us aren't listening. The only time I will use McDonald's is if there literally is nothing else. Um, and that's it. Anyway, yes, Arrival. Um, a secret agent who may or may not be John Drake. That's never been confirmed or denied. Um, sorry, Danger Man? Yep. Um, resigns and gets kidnapped and wakes up in a tiny little Italian-style village. Um, which is Honestly, odd. I wouldn't mind doing that. <laughs> Put me in the damn village. I'll be happy. <laughs> okay, that's his response after seeing Arrival. Let's see how we do as we go on. How his response is going to be. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to sit out a little bit of this one. I did watch this. Um, enjoyed it immensely. Uh, Eddie, you're the expert when it comes to the prisoner, and Brian, you're the new boy. So, Brian, tell us what you thought of it, and Eddie can fill in gaps and details. I'm still trying to figure out. Why they're afraid of the giant latex balls. Rover! Yeah, those things. Eddie, why would they be scared of Rover? Because Rover is an a, a artificial intelligent being who is uh, indestructible and can smother you to death. That being, and, 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 within, the, and within the village, and within the village, uh, pins are banned. So you can't find a pin. Uh, any sharp objects doesn't exist. So Rover is indestructible. But how do they cut their food if sharp objects are banned? Uh, they live on protein pills. Sorry, I'm just making this up now. <laughs> Lots of unanswered questions. Brian, go with it. You did. You haven't seen that. I've banned you from seeing the docu any documentaries to do with the prisoner until yeah. we finish watching it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I did watch In My Mind, which is on Amazon, and it's free on Amazon to watch. Uh, if you've got and a subscription. Um, and there were clips of the original Rover. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. You'll be really glad about the weather balloon. <laughs> Just like, there was only so much they could do with the technology they had at the time, right? But uh, 
Rover Rover will feature more prominently and you've, you've got more to come. And uh, I did love the old helicopters. Oh, weren't they wonderful? Remind me of the old TV oh, series, nice. The Whirlybirds. Yeah, the, I love those old helicopters. I was trying to think what they were. They weren't Ariettes. That, that's a French thing. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> they had, you know, the, the chick that helps them but betrays them, but helps them but betrays them. That, that, that's, that's the whole... That's an ongoing theme. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that, to be, yeah that, that looks like it's coming up a lot. That... Trust me. Really, he didn't see the statue's heads move when he was walking, or the cameras in. Br Br Brian, Brian, you're yeah. supposed to just go with it, love. <laughs> <coughs> you need to suspend your disbelief. The man. It's a not real. Agent. He's supposed to be observant. Or well, was he a secret Danger agent? Danger lurks around at every corner. Why is he trusting this statue? He, he, he's a government servant, but do we know that he's a secret agent? Exactly. The, the amount of information in his head is very valuable. Doesn't mean it's a secret agent. Civil servant. It could. It could, yep. And, and quite it, frankly, I think it's fairly obvious he, he was. He jumps to his death. Um, interesting. What did you just make as a general impression? You know... What did you make of Arrival? You know, was did it enjoyable? It, did it tick the boxes? Did it intrigue you? It was you? good. It hit, it hit a, lot of, a lot of good themes. I enjoyed it. Put it right. Um, given the state of the world right now, I kind of want to live there myself. Uh, yeah. We'll come back to that. <laughs> what did you make uh, of What did you make of Number Six as a character, though? Because we, we discussed some similar theme with the with the. William Hartnell's doctor. Yeah, what do you think? he's Six? definitely a, a product of his time. How so? Very, very old um, James Bond. Um, very forceful. Um, very, this is my <laughs> way. And I love the fact he did the suits. Just suit all the time. That was fantastic until they took it away from him. And uh, gave him the, uh, the hat and the the blazer. Umbrella, which he's like, fuck this. <laughs> Tossed it in the back of the, of the cab. The Minimoke. Yeah, Minimokes. Used to love Minimokes. They were wicked. But he, he's a flawed character as well. He's, he's not your perfect all action hero. He is action hero, but he, he has his flaws. And the key thing is he's got a short temper. Mm. Uh, and that can sometimes put the blinkers on. And that's, he becomes very focused on what he's doing. Which may explain why he's he's he's, he's my, my own mission, and sometimes that can I don't want to spoil it. You'll see as you you'll see as you. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't want to say anything more about what's coming up because you need to see it. Well, of course. Um, the prisoner is an iconic show, and you will un you will understand why. <laughs> um, if you don't, Eddie will be upset. Um, I keep getting the feeling that the town is like Wayward Pines, if you've ever seen that show. I, no, Idyllic sorry. settings, uh, nice community. Definitely watch Wayward Pines. It's on Hulu. It's The pacing is incredibly horrible. As in it's too fast, and they come to things too, fa too soon that should have been left for season finales, but... Definitely watch it. You'll you'll get the same feeling as the prisoner. What what did you make of the setting? What do you what do you actually make of the village though in terms of look, feel, how hmm? what did you make of the village? So it's a place in North Wales called Port Marion, which is one of my favourite places in the world. I've only been once uh, and I like to go back again. because uh, the, the old folks home is, is that's actually the hotel. And the boat it's either that the stone boat is an actual genuine stone boat. It's totally superfluous. Has absolutely no practical purpose at all for the fact that it's been there, and that it's again, it's one of the most unusual. Like I said, I'd love to live there. It, it's I love the there. I have to admit, it must have one hell of a tidal drag in there. I was looking at the estuary. 
Uh, I mean, there's hardly it. There's bugger all water there. So when the tide does come in, because if you look at the sandbars, it has water on it. So obviously the, the tide comes in. It must have quite a drag going up there. I mean, we had some amazing tides in Jersey. But, uh, yeah, you don't often see the village with the tide in, to be honest. It's, it's normally you just, if the tide's out and you just see the sand. Yeah, I no. saw the guy he was playing chess with. Take the boat out. I'm looking at Oh, the, the Admiral. Like, we like the Admiral. <laughs> where, where the hell is he going to go with salt sand? They're using their imagination. The old folks home, they're dancing around like kids. Oh, they're, 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 they're all jogged off the steps. It's not damn straight. Most of the village oh, is, yeah. quite frankly. Um, anyway, what did you make of number two? Which number two? Good night, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. Which one would you like to talk about? Number two, one was okay. I liked him. Right. Number two, two, he was. He's got this more mastermind. I'm trying to be an evil mastermind thing. Don't get attached to any number twos. <laughs> <laughs> except That's the good, huh? except the next one. Uh, uh, am I right in saying it's the chimes of Big Ben next? Uh, it depends on what order you watch it, because transmission order, the order that, uh, that Magoon wanted you to. So let's go with transmission. What would make... <laughs> if if such a question can be asked of the prisoner, what would make more sense? Which which way round? Doesn't really matter. All right. I mean, that's that. So we'll just do a transmission order. So it's the chimes of Big yeah. Ben at next, Brian. Um, which we'll well we'll talk about next week along with the Daleks slash the mutants slash the survivors slash oh fucking hell kill me now. Um, You've done this to yourself. Yeah, I know. I mean, an unearthly child is actually a hundred thousand BC, um, or the tribe of gum, or. Aztecs is good. Historicals are avoid. Uh, some of them are really good. Um, have a listen to the Highlanders. That's great fun. Chugs along really nicely. Yeah, I find it racist. Yeah, but again, context doesn't mean it's <laughs> right. But as I've said, it is of its time. It doesn't mean it's right. But you have to remember and keep that in mind, and not just go, "Oh my God, no, rip up the books." Um, if you rip up the books, you're not going to learn from them, are you? You're just going to repeat the same thing a little while later. So, keep them. But keep them as a warning. Keep the context there. You've been talking to my son. He's no. always trying to get to do more history things. And... Hello, doggy. Oh, right. Sean, Sean, Sean's just put his favourite number two there. I think he's agreeing with yourself, Sean. Mm, yes. Um, you can get attached to Leo McKern. All right, then, then, then the, the, the new number two next week. All right. You can, you, that's the only one I would suggest getting attached to. Okay. All right. Um, we won't say any more about that. You saw Doctor on Britbox, didn't you? Yeah. Right. Oh, so. No, the prisoner. No, prisoner was on Amazon. No, Britbox, love. Um, hang on. Did you pay for it or was it free? Amazon I, US I has got the prisoner for thing. Okay, because over here, I mean, if you want to watch The Prisoner on Prime, you have to pay. You have to buy it. Yeah. US will be get it for free. Oh, that, that's good. I don't want anybody spending money to do this. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want anybody spending money to do this, I'm afraid. And it was on, oh, that TV thing that shows, oh, yeah, oh I can't remember the name yet. It's not Pulse TV. There's, there's another TV app. Pluto. Pluto for a while as well. Adams makes an interesting point. What about Ian McKellen's number two? Maybe once we get to the end of this, and if we can track it down, we'll have a look at the first episode of the re rebooted Prisoner. It's on YouTube. We could have a live. Do you know? I think it might be on YouTube. It maybe, maybe I'm hearing a live watch with the listeners of it. Well, we're going to do that with Fallout. Um, ah, yeah, so anyway, a couple of little stories. Uh, Fallout, uh, no, not Fallout, Live Watch. We did Sapphire and Steel <coughs> last week, didn't we? Uh, yeah. The final two episodes. Um, within seconds of me transferring the broadcast from Twitch to YouTube, I had a copyright claim against it. Oh, 
Oh. That's all right. It's okay. I don't monetize these videos anyway. Um, so, you know, if you see adver ever see adverts on any of our stuff, it's not me. Okay. Um, there's obviously been a copyright strike and they've decided to monetize it. What do you think it was monetized for? What do you think the copyright claim was for? Music? Which music? Uh, the Sapphire and Steel theme song. And I mean, because we showed the whole two episodes through on that show, broadcast. No, no, I'm going to say the horns. I, I, I'm going to say it in my heart because of the Prisoner logo on it, so I'm just turning it around just in case it was that. Nope. I'm not being gangster. Right at the end, when they walk back into the cafe, yeah, there's some Glenn Miller playing in the background. It's, oh, there's about wait. two seconds of it that's clear because there's no dialogue. And that's what the copyright strike was for. And it was instant as soon as I transferred it. It's bizarre. It's can, I, can, I, can, I, can I say, fuck you, Glenn Miller? Fuck you. Sorry. I don't, well, I don't think it's his fault. It's some try-hard music oh, company. Um, idiot that owns the copyright on Glenn Miller now trying to make a buck. Nah, but, but, um, <laughs> the other thing, Britbox. Yeah, what am I moan about Britbox? It's what, just, is, this rant? is this going to be a rant just before we start? Because I always like to settle in for a minute. Yeah, I need to settle get in. comfortable for this. Settle in. Right, so, so, <clears throat> Oh, I've just punched the microphone. Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. just a second. Ah. Mm. Just getting comfortable. <coughs> okay, yeah. are you ready now? We're ready. Okay, Britbox, the rant. So, um, I've been umming and erring. I've been trying to track down Endeavour. Uh, I wanted to start watching it. Um, Adam loves Morse and Endeavour, so I thought, all right. I'll give it a shot. And I know that occasionally they do silly things. Like in one episode, they turned up at the Crossroads Motel. Um, <clears throat> and another time, they had part of it played out by Jerry Anderson puppets. Um, so I thought, I want to watch this series. Plus, it's, it's a period drama, uh, which the 60s or 50s are nowadays. And so I thought I'd watch it. So went on. First of all, I went via the Virgin app. On my, on my telly. Went to the ITV thingy on there, and it. Any of the. Um, any endeavours that I want to watch, I've got to subscribe for somehow, which means phoning Virgin up, which means paying more money. Okay, all right. I can't do that now. For a start, it's the weekend. That's ridiculous. I'll tell you what, there's the ITV Hub app on the Xbox. Brilliant. See, I don't like sitting here watching stuff on the computer. All right, it's a bit uncomfy. I'd rather be in my big comfy couch with my big telly and surround sound. That's what it's there for, to watch stuff on. Um, so ITV Hub um, app on the Xbox. They have five episodes on there, I think, from the latest season, as well as an advert for BritBox, where you can watch the rest of it. All right. All right, we'll do that. That's good. Okay. I don't want to. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it through the Edge browser on Xbox. So I can actually bring up the web page and watch it on there. But on my phone, got myself the three thirty day trial of Britbox chucked in the stuff. Brought up I think to test it out I put Tenth Planet One on. The video won't play. Oh. Oh okay. Try a couple of times, try on a couple of other videos. Nope, nope. So I'm guessing there is a missing plug-in on the Edge browser on Xbox. That means BritBox won't play on it. Edge is the devil. Never use Edge. Well, it's all that comes with the Xbox, isn't it? There isn't another browser. It's, uh, there should be a BritBox app for the Xbox. There isn't. Not in the Britain. Oh. Um, if there had been, I'd, be, I'd have been away and running. I, I really would. So, uh, okay, I'll get the app on the phone and then, cunning, see if I can stream the video over to the television. Genius. Download the app, put in all the details. Click on the video, the phone crashes. Odd. Reboot the phone. Try it again, the phone crashes. Britbox, the app on Britbox crashes my phone. I... 
I'm going to see if it's possible to get it up on my Chrome browser on the computer and stream it across from the computers to the telly. Do you have a Chromecast? Uh, yes, somewhere. I do. If you have a Chromecast, you can do it. But I think the telly's got it built in anyway. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so, yeah, at the yes. moment, Britbox, get your bloody asses sorted out. Get your app working so it doesn't crash phones. All right? Oh, yeah, their phone app is horrible. Um, and, after, after every episode. and for Christ's sake, yeah. sort out an app on the Xbox, on the PS4 and whatever, where people will want to sit down and watch stuff on their televisions. You, you might struggle with Chromecasting it. I've got it, and I, I can watch it uh, using my Amazon Fire HD stick. Hang on. Uh, if I download it on my phone, the app works on my phone. As soon as I try and uh, cast it to my TV, mm -hmm. I get an error message saying that my TV's got the wrong version of Chrome, Chromecast, and my TV won't let me update. So uh, ho hopefully it's a bit better for yourself, Shivan. Well, I actually have the dangle for uh, Chromecast. I, I've got a dongly Chrome. Um, yes. Right, hang on, I'm just signing in BritBox at the moment. Admittedly, I don't have the telly on. What I found works best for me is I <coughs> use the uh, HDMI cable to connect my laptop to my computer, or to my TV. Right, and uh, I basically extend the stream, do a dual screen thing there. Classic science fiction contains racial stereotypes. Here we go. All right, boys and girls. And there's no streaming it across. There's no sharing it button. Apparently this is an HD. Right, so I can watch BritBox certainly on the computer. But I don't want to watch it on the computer. I want to watch it on my telly. It's television programs. Yeah, I think it could be that the fact that the telly isn't on. I'm going to have to have a little look. It would be nice if I could stream no, it across there. No, it's not. Plus, I would also... I just looked on mine and it's coming up as no casting. It would be good if your Virgin Box would actually look at it. I mean, I've got Prime and I've got Netflix. I can watch on my... Uh, again, it, it, but again, it is, like with the Xbox app, this is something they're probably going to have to... It'll take time to develop and go through. But eventually, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just a pain in the ass because I'm sure there's some stuff on there I'd want to see. And I don't mean Doctor Who. I mean, yeah, it'd be great to have Doctor Who there on, on tap. But... Um, right. I'm going through. I, I just finished uh, the Pertwee era. I'm working on uh, Good grief. the Baker era right now. Interesting. I just got the uh, first two um, story arcs for Baker. I finished the arc in space, and I didn't have to hide, be hide behind the furniture this time. Hey, I wonder if Take you get options. I wonder if you get the options for the CGI version, <laughs> the, the new CGI. It's like Day of the Daleks. I wonder if you get the option to watch the special edition. Uh, that was on the DVD, which was an improvement. I, I mean, I love Day of the Daleks. My favourite Dalek stories always used to be Planet of the Daleks. Now I think it's more Day of the Daleks. And when I saw the special edition, my only complaint is they removed no complications. Um, Grantly the Ogron's big moment. Ooh, up next I have Genesis of the Daleks. Have I seen that one? Hmm. Oh, yes, you have. I shall watch it in in, in glorious Blu-ray with 5.1. I've got a confession to make about Genesis. No, I'm kidding. I've watched Genesis. I will I fucking it. come up there and slap you, social distancing <laughs> or not. Where did I put that bloody eye thing? Hang on a second. I might be able to find it here and show it to the nice boys and girls. Glasgow a lot easier than over here. Glasgow? Where's Glasgow? There you go. That's what I deem them, boys and girls. That is what I... <coughs> Bastards. Young. Ignorant. Just... <laughs> oh, dear. Power of the Daleks is very good. Um, it's interesting to note that on the colour version of that, uh, end of episode five, beginning of episode six, they've actually... The colouring team have flipped... The picture round. So it's um, the Daleks' sucker arm, for example, is on the left, not the right, and, and whatever. It, it's fascinating that they've done that. That's not to 
the animation team's fault. If you look at the black and white version, it's correct. Somehow the colour team fucked it up. There you go. You are. You're a degenerate colonial. I'll take it. Yeah. Hey, I'm only six arcs away from uh, the brain of Morbius. Mobius. Arcs. Why don't you just say six stories? Because I'm American and we call them arcs. Mm, yes, you've, you've infected us with this whole season thing as well, haven't you? Cereals. Well, like, I like well, cereals. I'm going with that. Space. Space. It's, it, 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 it's a series made up of cereals. Mm -hmm. I'll see. go with the cereals. I'm six cereals away from the brain of Morbius. It's not that good. I'm sorry, oh, Philip Maddock is brilliant in it. Are now having a hemorrhage. But, uh, well, Philip Maddock is brilliant in it, but um, it's it's a bit dull, really. It's just pop over to see the Sisterhood, pop back again, pop over again, pop back again. Uh, it's practically the same yeah. bloody cliffhanger all the way through. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a great one for... Everyone goes on about the Hinchcliffe Golden Era. Uh, it could be a case of familiarity breeding contempt. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I I prefer Graham Williams. Stunned silence from Eddie. Complete. No idea what she's talking about from Brian. I, I, I was thinking about what, what's that? What's the guy that does the theme music to Star Wars got to do with Doctor Who? But then again, you bring up your... John Bloody Williams. <laughs> That's Adam's fault. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I like the piano on that. Can we put look what I want? All right. Um, I'd like the droid army theme, please. Droid army theme from the Phantom Menace. Oh, you bastard! All right, I'll do the droid army theme, which meant listening to it and listening to it and listening to it and listening to it until I got it into my head. John Bloody Williams, it's your the fault. Person. The, the brain, the brains are more. The brain more bases. It's it's. Watch you're watching that now in the context of what the, the last episode of the current season. Yeah, you'll love it, Brian. Oh yeah, Enjoy. very much so. Yeah. Uh, it, it's wonderful. I, I still Javon, yes, love. Destiny of the Daleks. Yeah, that's okay. a fun one. That's a good one. That's exactly what we're talking about when we say Rick James here. What long gold silver dreadlocks. Yes. And oh, yes. Yes, remember the Rick James hair we've had to describe? No. Yeah. The mortal well, enemies. Back, we had to the Mavellans. The Mavellans. I, I know the Mavellans hair, but what are you talking about Rick, this Rick James person for? That's Rick James. Who is Rick James? He was an American disco. Right, why are we talking about him? Because I just saw a picture of them. Hey, looks like I'm over right, here. right, hooray! I now know why we're talking about what the hell we're talking about. I'm so old. <laughs> Don't worry. Just go with it. If I remember right, he was a member of Parliament, Funkadelic. Rick James. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, the Marquis of Bath has died. Yes, who's died? The Marquis of Bath. Lord Longleat. Oh. He was a big he, he he was a big Doctor Who supporter. He he, he wanted the uh, exhibition there and whatever. Uh, uh, eccentric as the great British eccentric, basically. If he had wifelets, I think he, he called them. Loads of women so, on tap. Um, um, the long, so he did the, the, the when they did the exhibitions in Longleat. He was the one that endorsed that and gave them access. Yeah, I, I believe so. Or oh, it could have been his father. I'm not sure, but. I, I, he didn't say no, you know, but no, uh, COVID-19, caught him, Goodness. so there we go, the Marquis of Death, no, we're not going to do the Marquis of Death, all right, <laughs> don't worry, you don't need to worry about the Marquis of Death. I, I'm going to worry because the Marquis of Death is super powerful. Yeah, trust me, you think you've got trouble at the moment. You ain't seen oh, nothing oh, yet. Oh, my condolences. Boris is in the hospital now. Boris is in hospital? Boris is in hospital. Sorry, folks. News break. This is a first for the Flashing Blade podcast. We're breaking news. Fuck me. We're breaking news <laughs> into reality. 
Prime Minister admitted to hospital over virus systems. Symptoms, even. Can I, can I just... Um, hang on a Fuck you, Sky News. We broke it first. Right. Uh, is a couple of those nurses who think that patients, you know, should be put out of their misery. The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has been admitted to hospital for tests. Ten days after testing positive for coronavirus, Downing Street has said... He was taken to a London hospital on Sunday evening with persistent symptoms, including a temperature. It is said to be a precautionary step taken on the advice of his doctor. The Prime Minister remains in charge of the government, but the Foreign Secretary is expected to chair a coronavirus meeting on Monday morning. Mr Johnson so is expected to stay overnight and is having what has been described as routine tests, according to BBC political editor Laura Kunzberg. Sorry, that was my that that was my 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 my, my breaking news voice. Ah, that was very well done. Yeah, and the only, the only thing I was missing was did they manage to get him out the fridge first? Get him out the fridge. You you you're, you're yeah. thinking of Russian leaders, love. No, no it was it was not the one of the things he, he went, he went hiding or something when one of the guys hid in the fridge when one of the he was asked awkward questions a few weeks back during the Brexit. Yes, he did go and hide in the fridge, didn't he? I forgot about that. Yeah. So just put him back in the fridge. That will control his temperature. Everything he did during that campaign, and they still voted for him in droves. Yeah. The questions got awkward, so he left and hid in the fridge until the, the nasty reporter went away. That's all. It's okay. Ours that are doing that are still going to church, so hopefully we won't have to worry about it much longer. Ah, it's not nice. You, you, no. No. It's not nice. It's horrible. Mm. This is what democracy is. We get what we vote for, and if we don't get who we want, well, tough. That's democracy. We'll have another roll of the dice again. As Churchill said, it's a terrible system, but it's the best one we've got. Do we Churchill now? No. Yeah. No. As opposed to Ken, uh, preacher Kenneth Copeland, who said he can blow coronavirus away with his breath. Please, sir, please do so. Here we are, we're in a coronavirus ward. Please blow it away. I will blow this thinking virus away, and then he blows at the camera. Televangelist Kenneth Copeland, who sermonized on to his congregation Thursday, Copeland. that with a little wind and heat, he could take the wind out of the sails of the deadly virus. I said it before. Yeah. I'll say it again. It's the age of stupid. Right now, we're this sort of um, finishing off on a downward note. Next week. The Daleks. Uh, the chimes of Big Ben. And we're going to leave it like that because, A, I don't know what's coming out from Big Finish this week. Uh, I need to check and I won't know until Monday or Tuesday. There might be a Big Finish. I just don't know what it, the release is. So if there is, there is. If there isn't, there isn't. Um, we've, but got the, we've got the, 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 the Winston Churchill says we back McCoy, era doctor, one they could listen to. Could, you got to think about Churchill, haven't you? He's a racist no. old git. No, 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 no. Racist old git. I don't, I don't do history. Which is why you like Churchill. Um. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. The dog. Yeah, I love the dog. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. The dog's brilliant. We love the dog. Oh yes. Um. <laughs> So that's it, guys. Take care, please. All right, look after yourselves. Help people if you can. Just be kind to each other, quite frankly. I say that all the time, but please just be kind to each other. We have to. All right, and just stay safe. And hopefully, we'll see you back here uh, same time next week. The book reading, um, I am going to continue it, but it's not going to be a regular thing. It'll just pop up on YouTube when I do it. Um, and. Uh, of course, we've got the role-playing game on Saturday nights, which you're welcome to sort of join the stream. And I cannot believe it took you all night to get from a clearing back to the three guys and then walk into the city a little bit. That's all you did. That was all you did for the whole fucking night. This scenario was designed to last one, maybe... Sessions? Do you remember?
remember what I told you about the mine? We were in there for six weeks. Oh, God almighty. Oh, one God. next thing. <laughs> six weeks in a mine. Four hour sessions a pop. Mind you, there was the one night yeah, that, uh, that we, we, we did do we, we did do a good one. Adam will back me up on this one. Because I've done, basically I've done all my role playing with Adam. Um and well until now. Uh we, we did have one evening where instead of doing the scenario, we just pointed at the thing and just went, ooh. That drove the uh, games master nuts. I'm hoping I have Passed an invitation in the hope I can get Keith to come and play with us. Um, he has the added bonus that he won't actually have to games master, which he always used to do. He used to prefer to play, and no one, he hardly ever got the chance. He was always the GM because no one else would do it. Adam did a little bit, I tried to, but I'm not very good, as you probably gathered. Uh, so it's it'd be nice if we can get Keith in just to make up the numbers because Ed, Eddie's had to drop out, unfortunately, because of real life. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Either 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 Eddie or possibly Sinjin, if I can get a hold of him. What? No, 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 no. Ha! Sorry, you were mentioning Kenneth Cope there in chat. Going back to what did you make of Patrick McGoon? Um friend of mine, Daniel Cohen. Uh he used to he did this wonderful little fan vid, The Men from ITC. Where essentially Um Randall, Jeff Randall, is killed. So the only ghost who can talk to his ghost is Marty Hopkirk. He now has to choose a human, someone who's alive, um, to pass on the message to save people. Who does he choose? Patrick McGowan, who nobody can understand. Because as, as Daniel said, if you listen to Patrick McGowan, it's basically just... <laughs> Sean, calm down. Sean. Um, yeah, he's a bit like a teacher from Charlie Brown. Sean, you're not allowed to hit an elderly woman when you meet me. <laughs> okay, guys, um, that's it. Please look after yourselves. Uh, thank you, Brian and Eddie, for just turning you're the welcome. computers on. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, like I say, uh, keep an Thanks eye open. Uh, subscribe to the channel, please. If you see it on YouTube, please subscribe. Hit the like button. It won't do anything. Like I say, I'm not making any bloody money out of it, but there we go. Um, oh, yeah, you can. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, there is a donation thing. Uh, PayPal, mcfadden at gmail.com, which is also the um, email um, address for the show. Uh, M-A-C-F-A-D-Y-A-N at gmail.com McFadden at gmail.com um, Send me, send us emails discussing what, what we discussed recently. What should we discuss? What are your views on the opinions of the subject? Hmm? We're going to go away now. You're supposed to say goodbye when I say that. Oh. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Oh, uh, amateurs. I'll see you all later. Cheers, guys. Wait for the hard drive to boot up. Hang on. You've got to fight for what you want, for all that you believe. It's right to fight for what we want, to live the way we please. As long as we have done our best, then no one can do more. And life and love and happiness are well worth fighting for. They're well worth fighting for.
Did I do the ironing? 